Ravenswood. The name itself felt heavy on the tongue, a whisper of forgotten things. Nestled amidst windswept moors, the village huddled under a perpetually grey sky. The Grimsby Manor loomed on the outskirts, a spectre against the bleak landscape. Locals spoke of the manor in hushed tones, their words laced with fear and superstition. It stood empty, a monument to a past shrouded in mystery. The manor was a place of shadows, its windows like vacant eyes. It had once been grand, a symbol of prosperity, now its facade crumbled, consumed by creeping ivy and neglect. It was a place where secrets lingered, whispered on the wind. It was a place of stories untold. Sophie was drawn to stories from a young age. She found herself captivated by the tales of old, the whispers of forgotten legends and the mysteries that seemed to linger in the shadows of history. A young journalist with an insatiable curiosity, she chased whispers and rumors wherever they led her. Her passion for uncovering the truth was matched only by her relentless determination. The more unsettling the tale, the more determined she was to uncover the truth. She believed that every story, no matter how dark, held a kernel of truth waiting to be discovered. She arrived in Ravenswood on a dreary afternoon, her gaze drawn instantly to the silhouette of Grimsby Manor against the brooding sky. The town itself seemed to whisper secrets and Sophie was eager to listen. Locals told her to stay away, their faces etched with worry. They spoke of the manor in hushed tones, as if afraid that even mentioning it might summon its dark presence. But their warnings only fueled her intrigue. The more they cautioned her, the more determined she became to uncover the secrets that lay within the manor's walls. I have a knack for finding trouble, or perhaps it's trouble that finds me. Either way, I can't resist the call of a good mystery. She thrived on the adrenaline rush of the unknown, the excitement that came with each new discovery. The thrill of the chase was what kept her going. The thrill of uncovering hidden truths. Each document she uncovered, each piece of the puzzle she found, brought her one step closer to the heart of the mystery. The Grimsby Manor, with its air of melancholy and its veil of local legends, was a siren's call she couldn't resist. The stories surrounding it were too compelling to ignore, and so, armed with her notebook and pen, she ventured towards the manor, ready to face the shadows within. She knew that whatever she found there would be worth the risk, for the truth was always worth pursuing. The air grew heavy as Sophie stepped onto the manor grounds. The iron gates groaned, protesting her intrusion. A shiver ran down her spine, a prickle of unease. Dust lay thick inside, undisturbed for years. Cobwebs draped the once ornate furniture like ghostly shrouds. Each footstep echoed in the oppressive silence, the sound amplified in the stillness. She moved through darkened hallways, her hand trailing along the cold, damp walls. A musty smell hung in the air, the scent of decay and forgotten memories. The manor seemed to press in around her, each room a testament to a time long gone. It was in the dusty attic that she stumbled upon a trunk, tucked away in a forgotten corner. The trunk creaked open, releasing a musty old paper scent that filled the room, evoking memories of forgotten times. Inside lay a collection of yellowed photographs and letters, remnants of a life lived long ago, each piece telling its own silent story. And then, nestled at the very bottom, she found it, a diary bound in red leather, its presence almost demanding attention. Its edges were worn smooth with time, the leather soft and supple, hinting at the countless times it had been opened and read. The first few entries were mundane, detailing the rhythms of life at Grimsby Manor. Eleanor Grimsby, the author, wrote about daily chores, social gatherings, and the changing seasons. The name was inscribed on the first page, the handwriting elegant and flowing, a testament to Eleanor's refined upbringing and education. The diary chronicled her days, her hopes, her dreams. Each page was a window into her soul, revealing her innermost thoughts and desires. Sophie was captivated, transported back in time to experience life through Eleanor's eyes. She could almost hear the laughter, feel the warmth of the sun, and sense the joy and sorrow that Eleanor had felt. But as the days in the diary turned into weeks, a shift occurred in Eleanor's entries. The lightheartedness began to fade, replaced by a growing tension. Her words became imbued with a growing sense of unease, a palpable fear that bled onto the pages. Eleanor's once vibrant world seemed to darken, shadows creeping into her life. 
leaving Sophie with a sense of foreboding as she read on. The shadows seemed to deepen as Sophie read further. Eleanor wrote of strange noises in the night, cold spots in certain rooms, and a feeling of being watched. My once bright tone grew frantic, my words filled with a desperate longing for the fear to subside. Sophie felt a shiver crawl up her spine, a sense of dread settling in her stomach. Eleanor described a presence in the manor, a malevolent entity that whispered her name in the dead of night. It was as if the manor itself was alive, feeding off her terror. The entries ended abruptly, the last page blank except for a single chilling sentence scrawled in a shaky hand. It knows I'm here. The diary fell from Sophie's grasp, landing with a soft thud on the dusty floor. A cold draft snaked through the attic, raising goosebumps on Sophie's arms. The hairs on the back of her neck stood on end, she was no longer alone. The air crackled with an unseen energy, a palpable sense of dread seeping into her bones. I tried to rationalize my fear, to attribute it to the eerie atmosphere of the manor and the unsettling words I'd just read. But deep down, a primal instinct screamed at her to run. The silence of the manor was shattered by the distinct sound of footsteps, slow and deliberate, coming from the hallway outside. Sophie's heart pounded against her ribs, her breath catching in her throat. She quickly blew out the lantern, plunging the attic into darkness. The footsteps stopped just outside the attic door. Sophie held her breath, her senses on high alert. The doorknob rattled. The old wooden door creaked open, inch by agonizing inch. Moonlight spilled into the room, casting long, dancing shadows on the dusty floor. I shrank back against the wall, my mind racing. I could hear my own pulse thundering in my ears. The air grew heavy, thick with an unseen presence. Then, just as suddenly as it began, the noise stopped. The door remained ajar, a sliver of moonlight illuminating the dust motes dancing in the air. Sophie waited, her breath trapped in her chest, but the silence remained unbroken. Slowly she rose to her feet, her legs shaky beneath her. She had to get out, to escape the suffocating atmosphere of the manor. But as she crept towards the attic door, a blood-curdling scream pierced the silence. It was her own. Panic seized her. She stumbled back, tripping over a loose floorboard. She fell, her head striking the hardwood floor with a sickening thud. Darkness swallowed her whole. News spread through Ravenswood like wildfire. Sophie was missing. The villagers, their faces etched with a mixture of fear and grim determination, gathered at the gates of Grimsby Manor. They had warned her, tried to dissuade her from entering that cursed place. Now, armed with lanterns and a shared sense of dread, we were prepared to face our fears to find her. They searched through the night, their calls of her name echoing through the empty halls of the manor. Each creaking floorboard, each gust of wind that rattled the windows sent shivers down their spines. They found her in the attic, unconscious, the red diary clutched tightly in her hand. As they carried her out of the manor, her limp hand brushed against something hidden beneath a floorboard. A small red leather-bound book, identical to the one she gripped, lay hidden from view. This one, however, had a name inscribed on the front, written in a spidery, malevolent hand. Jonathan Grimsby. And as the villagers crossed the threshold of the manor, leaving the shadows behind, a faint whisper echoed in the attic, unheard by human ears. Sophie would recover, but the ordeal left an indelible mark on her psyche. The nights were the hardest, filled with restless dreams and shadows that seemed to whisper her name. Each creak of the floorboards, each rustle of the wind, brought back memories of the terror she had faced. She left Ravenswood, taking the diary with her. It was a bittersweet departure, leaving behind the only home she had ever known. The diary, with its worn pages and cryptic entries, was her only link to the past a past she was both desperate to escape and compelled to understand. The manor stood silent once more, a watchful sentinel over the village. Its windows, like eyes, seemed to follow the villagers, a constant reminder of the secrets it held. The once grand halls now echoed with silence, a stark contrast to the chaos that had once filled them. The villagers returned to their routines, but the events at Grimsby Manor lingered in their thoughts a chilling reminder of the darkness that lay hidden beneath the surface of their peaceful world. Conversations were hushed, 
and glances were furtive, as if speaking of the manor might summon its dark presence once more. And the Red Diary? It remained in Sophie's possession, a tangible connection to a haunting past and a chilling truth. Each entry she read brought her closer to understanding the horrors that had unfolded, yet also deeper into the mystery that surrounded Jonathan Grimsby and his ill-fated legacy. Some stories, it seemed, were meant to remain untold. The diary hinted at secrets too dark to be fully revealed, secrets that had the power to shatter the fragile peace of Ravenswood. Yet the temptation to uncover the truth was a powerful force, one that Sophie found increasingly hard to resist. The legacy of fear lived on, woven into the very fabric of Ravenswood. It was in the wary eyes of the villagers, in the whispered tales told to children, and in the unspoken understanding that some places were best left undisturbed, the fear was a living thing, passed down through generations. And in the eerie silence of the Grimsby Manor, Jonathan Grimsby's diary lay hidden, waiting for its next unsuspecting reader, the manor, with its darkened corners and forgotten rooms, held its breath, as if anticipating the moment when its secrets would once again be brought to light. The cycle, it seemed, was far from over. The fear, the mystery and the darkness were all part of an unending story, one that would continue to unfold as long as there were those curious enough to seek the truth. The legacy of fear was not just a memory, it was a living, breathing entity waiting to ensnare its next victim.